coconut. I even kept your room just as it was. <sighs> you slept under the engine? What a dump. All the stories you would tell me. This is where you saw it from. The battles, the planets, the window of dreams. <laughs> ah, what is this contraption? Oh, looks powerful. It's a cloaking device. Oh, huh? she reads Klingons. A girl like that can be useful. <laughs> cloaking? It can make a ship invisible. <laughs> Too bad it doesn't work without Chimerium. It's impossible to get your hands on. Chimerium? We have loads of that. If we're invisible, we could hide from you know who. <clears throat> Chimerium? Who said we have Chimerium? Rock did? Just now? Gee, this guy. Pride, a gay Star Trek podcast. I am one of your hosts, Johnson Lee, and with me is my co-host, Mike Thurlow. Hi, Johnson Lee. <laughs> Welcome to Shay Mike Thurlow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, do you want to tell our uh, listeners what's different today? We're, we're together in person. We are together in person. I, I think they can recognize that. We'll, we'll probably leave the beginning part in as... Johnson is opening up a bottle of Shikard. Uh, Shikard. He can't speak. Oh my God. <laughs> Shikard Pateau. Uh, <laughs> what? Chateau Picard. Thank you. Yes. There I, you I, go. Oh, nice pop. Yes. So, um, what happened was one of my friends for my birthday, for my 40th birthday, I'm now officially old and in the same decade as Mike. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Um, sent me a bottle of Chateau Picard and a bottle of Canard, which was very nice. Wow. Very unexpected. And this is a friend, um, shout out to this friend, her name is Sherry, is not a Star Trek fan, but she legit just went searching on the internet for gifts that she thought would be appropriate for me. And she came across this and I was completely blown away, totally unexpected. And I looked it up. It is a total ripoff. It's like two bottles of wine for like $130. That is that is quite expensive. It's like, so this bottle of Chateau, Chateau Picard is 65 bucks. So we're going to do a little bit of taste test today. When are we going to drink the Canar? I'm, I'm fascinated. Next, next time. I'm fascinated well, by Canar too. Well, the thing is, the Canar is also a red. So it's not just, it's not the like gooey. Oh, it's not. Different. It's not gooey. It's not like molasses, which... Is it's, how it's supposed to be, right? Um, I don't. I think it's also kind of blend. This Chateau Picard is uh, it's a Cabernet Sauvignon and a Merlot blend. Okay. So let's see. You're a Cab Sauv, uh fan, right? Uh, I mean, Dennis is more the Cab Sauv fan, so okay. we're like aerating it. We're aerating, aerating it. it. This yeah. is what's happening. You're smelling so, it. How so smell? you no. Know, so what happened? So one thing we learned in our travels to Napa over the summer, okay. last summer, okay, I'm swirling, which is the last time that we actually reco- recorded was after, sometime before or after Hawaii and, and Napa, but okay, um, swirling. So yes, you swirl to aerate it, but then you sniff from the top of the glass, not the bottom of the glass. What is the, what is the top? The top is up here. Uh, and you'll get the bouquet. If you smell down below, you'll get the alcohol smell. Okay. So sure. Um, so that's how you you're supposed to smell from the top of the glass. Okay. When you're when you're smelling. So let's let's taste and see what we think about that. Wait, what do you smell? I smell I'm wine. I'm not that that sophisticated I a wine, wine maker. I smell wine. Uh, I smell, well, why I don't smell. you? Well, let's take a sip and then you can read the bottle description. Okay. Because this is not a. All right, well, cheers, is, cheers. 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 Oh my god, it's very tart and bitter. Oh god, I hate it. 
Okay. <laughs> Chateau of Picard, there's a quote from pa from Captain John Luke Picard. I don't think um, this is an actual quote from him because he's a fictional character. I don't think it's a quote from a even like a, a series or a movie. They say a, win a Venture's history is in every glass. The soul he comes from, his past hopes for the future. So to the future, dot, dot, dot. Captain John Luke Picard. Okay, well, okay. to the future. To the future. Yes. Ugh, I do not want to drink the rest of this. Uh, Captain John Luke Picard's family roots are in France's premier wine country, where the Picard family cultivated the land and crafted premium French wines since the late 20th century. Chateau Picard was well known throughout the galaxy. Was it? Um, so <laughs> the trivia here is that there is an actual Chateau Picard, and the... The, the labelers basically went to them and was like, hey, we have we want to do this partnership with Paramount and slash CBS. <laughs> Would you be up for it? So they basically created like a limited edition uh, that was branded Chateau Picard. So they probably got shafted is probably the, the true story here. You mean are you talking about the vineyard? Yes. They got shafted by Paramount slash CBS. And they were paid. I'm sure they were paid handsomely for this. Uh. I mean the the label's nice. I uh, I can't. I don't know. I don't like this wine. Do you like it? <laughs> I mean, it's a so it's very I mean, it's, acidic. It's a mix. It's, it's you're right. It is very acidic, and I'm not a not a huge red drinker. Um, I like this. I like reds, but this is just I don't. I don't this I, is very acidic. But it's what you're very what, acidic. It's gonna give me acid reflux in like what, five minutes. What uh, year is this? Twenty three eighty six. That's what it says here. Does it really say 2386? <laughs> I mean, it says 2386. Oh, my word. It does. But um, on the back, it says 2017. Oh, 2017. Okay. So yeah. it's it's a... Yeah, this is more light body than I would expect. But yeah, it is I would a hope, blend. Yeah, I would like, a want a fuller. I mean, like a mix between a cab, a cab and a Merlot, you would think this is more full. But it feels very... Um, it feels very light, but you're right. Yeah. It is uh, It is a little acidic. A little alcoholy, um, but maybe it'll get better as we let it air out. I don't know about that, but we can hope for the best. We can, and uh, so it's good to be here in person. Yeah, we haven't done this yes in a long time. Very exciting, as evidenced by trying to figure out the setup once again. That took like too too much time. That took like it twenty minutes. All right, it took to the future. <laughs> I was like, are you troubleshooting or are you sitting there? Just kidding. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, here we are. Uh, here we are drinking Chateau Picard. I hope the canard is better. Um, and we are also here to talk about Star Trek. Yes. And there's a lot of Star Trek news. There right? is. There's a lot going on this week. Um, and yeah, I saw it on Instagram before I saw it in our Slack channel. So... Um, yeah, it was. Uh, I was sort of ahead, but I didn't have. I saw it, and I didn't have enough time to like share it with everyone, or or think about sharing it. I was like, I, I was mindlessly scrolling as a distraction, I'm sure, mm -hmm. and saw it, and then probably work intervened before I could even share it with you. I don't think I shared this, the Instagram post I saw with you. No, it was. It ended up being in our Trek Geeks podcast Slack group, right? That Bill shared it with us, yep. and. I was like, ooh, news. Yes. So uh, basically we found out the premiere dates of, I mean, we knew that Discovery coming back, big surprise, but we specifically found out the premiere dates of The Car Season 2 and Strange New Worlds, a series premiere. And we also found out that, I mean, we knew that Picard is coming back for Season 3. We found out that Strange New Worlds has already been renewed for Season 2. Picard season three we knew about. What was what else? Lower oh, Decks well, season season four. Yes, that was news. And also Discovery season five. And Discovery season five. You're correct. Right. Yes. Uh, and we'll get the after the the next two episodes of Prodigy. We'll get ten more episodes later in 2022. That's right. right. Which as he, as I posited at dinner tonight. Uh, is probably going to fill that gap after Lower Decks and before, hopefully, Discovery Season 5, if they're keeping the same rotation. But I have not heard of anybody going back yet to start 
production of season five yet. Yeah, so, we'll have to um, see. I do feel, as I said to you over dinner, I think that Prodigy is kind of getting shafted a little bit with their schedule. They're kind of just operating as a filler, but it is what it is. It's fine. I mean, it, you know, so far we've seen, well, based upon uh, what well, we've just seen eight episodes, right? But uh, the first five fit a nice little like mini movie kind of. <laughs> for those of you who obviously can't see because there's no video recording this week but uh johnson is choking on his chateau picard right now uh but, i did not recommend this wine it's, I, it's you, you know blends can either be good or bad and i think you know it it really depends and maybe this just needs to age a little bit more um i don't know if that's gonna help but you know, again hope you know, this also, color. if this was made in 2386 and transported back in time, it's still <laughs> it's still a young it's a young blend. Maybe. But Maybe. Um, yeah, I think uh, m- the way I'm looking at this as Prodigy is it's like so- sort of maybe three or four mini movies. Uh, the first five episodes definitely kind of completed an arc. And uh, I think that we're going to see, based upon the end of this week's episode, we're going mm-hmm. to see another kind of arc kind yeah. of come to a, maybe to a point. Um, but I think, you know, based upon the trajectory of what we saw in this week's episode, mm-hmm. uh, we're probably going to have a cliffhanger at the end of episode 10. I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. I just don't know, you know, again, their primary demographic being kids, like how... I would kind of just kind of lose patience and, I don't know, kind of getting strung along a little bit, you know, but whatever. Right. Well, I think also to uh, the length of time. So, uh, you know, if you and you can actually watch this live or not live, you can watch it recorded on YouTube on the Truck Geeks Podcast Network YouTube channel. The uh, telethon from this past weekend which i watched oh yeah uh, you are of. you are definitely into that i was like i don't know what you're talking about i mean i thought the the panels were great it was a it was long and i did watch other things and you know watch listen to some more than others but uh during the animated uh part of the telethon uh the hageman brothers did say that they wrote these episodes over two years ago right so the lead time on prodigy is much greater than Lower Decks. Then Lower Decks, sure. which Lower Decks, uh, Mike Kung fan did share that Lower Decks Season 3 is in post-production mm-hmm. already. So uh, that's incredible. And uh, they also, I can't remember if he said that they got picked. He he stopped short, I think, of saying that they, I felt like he was going to go on and say, and eh, we're starting to write Season 4, mm-hmm. but he didn't say that. I felt like he was going to say that, but he yeah. didn't. And uh, I do think that Lower Decks has a much shorter production turnaround time. I mean, you think about like even The Simpsons, they like turn out episodes like crazy. Yeah. It's just a production house, you know, like it's assembly line versus 3D I, animation. Which yeah. It's much more complex. I had no idea about this. So uh, it's interesting. Uh, that was an interesting education uh, in the length of time. Uh, and, and I mean, Prodigy is beautiful. I mean, oh, right. no, everything so about detail. that, there's incredible amounts of detail. So I think that this is um, as much a visual show as it is a character show and a Star Trek show. Sure. Um, so that's, you know, I don't, I don't know that they get the shaft. I think it's just the way that the production is going for whatever reason. Maybe it's, you know, it maybe in COVID it's even taking longer than the normal turnaround time for a 3D animated show. I don't know why it would, but... I don't know. I think that they're just kind of being treated as filler personally, but... Maybe? No, I mean, I'm sure an element is post-production, but at the same time, it's like, if post-production was really an issue, why not wait until more episodes are in the can? It's just, like, very... I get it. I think they're doing the best they can, given, you know, the little story arcs that they have, but it's... If the attention... If the intention here is to draw in a younger audience, I'm not sure giving them five episode spurts that are split up between like in months with months in between is really the best way for them to be growing this audience to be honest no that's a good point i, I think uh i'm wondering though if that was not the plan originally and then covid kind of changed this whole Potentially, plan. yeah i think i think uh post-production on everything is taking longer than it normally would um 
the turnaround times on this. Sure. But, you know, anyway, uh, the other news. So Discovery Season 5. So uh, that's, you know, pretty exciting. I wonder um, if Michael Burnham is going to save the universe again. <laughs> Just wondering. Well, we you don't know. know curious that, minds want to know. But, we, you know. <laughs> we don't even know if uh, the universe is going to survive oh, Season yeah. 4. So... Um, we don't know. Uh, I still think I'm one still. Of gonna, one of them is going to be time travel. Uh, <laughs> it's fifty fifty. It's it's probably more seventy five twenty five. I know actually. basically it's, or ninety ten at this point, um, considering. But uh, yeah, so we we've got season five of Discovery. We've got before they even um, so other than a, a launch date for Picard. We already know that they're in production for season three, which they had to take a, a week off because of co- <laughs> 50 staffers got COVID. 50? Yeah. Oh, that wow. A lot. That is a lot. Where did Inclu- you hear 50? It was in the news, including really? some major cast members. Not Patrick Stewart, though. I don't think so. No. That would be uh, bad. Wow. But it was 50. I what? mean, they, ha- they have like four, 450 people on staff. Oh, okay. It's, it's a huge reduction. Okay. But... Yeah, it was not great. Well, it was suboptimal, as someone uh, would say. Yes, as as someone would say. I can't <laughs> imagine who would say that. Uh, that's unfortunate, and and hopefully everyone on the crew was vaccinated, and they are only hopefully. having mild and and manageable sy- symptoms. Hopefully, so you can take the rest of this bottle. <laughs> I really well, it, you know, I'm sure uh, Dennis will um, really he try it. Like yeah, it? I mean he he. I don't know if he'll like it, but he will drink it. Ugh, I... uh, he is coming back from his trip with nine bottles of wine. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> In his suitcase, which is going to be interesting. Okay. Uh, oh, my God. So we'll see what happens there. Um, oh, he, well. may, he may come back with zero bottles of wine and also a need to buy all of his clothes. <laughs> Um, well, you know what? You guys spend your money on dogs and wine. I spend money on fish and coral. So we all have our vices. We all have our vices, exactly. Yes. So yes. there we are. Uh, speaking of dogs, hopefully uh, Hamish will... I think Hamish is asleep now. He's taking a nap. Yeah, he, he was, was really... He was whining. He was being earlier. a really whiny bitch earlier. <laughs> but, uh, you know, now he's okay. He's passed out. He's fine. Yeah. I told him he'd be fine, and he was, just saying, he is fine. That's just how saying. it goes. Uh so let's see what else do we have so no we already knew picard season three is happening it's actually technically the last season of picard mm-hmm. uh, so we're told at least at the moment uh and then strange new worlds may, may. may 3rd? 5th? 5th? 3rd something something first week of may yeah uh so that's exciting. And they've already been renewed for season two, which means that whatever... Oh, which is a little surprising. I was like, okay, that's fine. Uh, I mean, they know they want more Star Trek, so might as well. They do. And I mean, someone or many someones must have seen a good portion of season one to say this is worth renewing before we even... I don't know. I just think other. they're like throwing money at Alex Kurtzman. It's like, sure, we'll take what you have. I mean, that's fine. Let them throw money at him. I mean... They're making lots of money on their shitty app called Paramount Plus, so. <laughs> um, but we won't go there this week, will we? No. <laughs> uh, we can restrain ourselves. Can we? After a glass of wine and two margaritas at dinner. A little know. more? I'll have some more, sure. Um, it'll keep the conversation lubricated as we go- move on. Um, so I think that's exciting. I think... Obviously, um, you know, I'm super excited for Anson Mount and, yeah. and crew who we haven't even met other than in a no. teaser trailer. Yeah. Uh, I mean, barely. It, wasn't uh, even, it was a character trailer. Yeah, it was. It right? wasn't even a teaser trailer. That's true. Hopefully in Chicago, we'll get some really good stuff. from. Oh, my God. Strangers. We need to like, start thinking about that trip. We do need to think about that. I'm actually worried because one of the things about, you know, uh, they have not canceled it they have not said changed their plans about it but you know a number of actors have said that they are still hunkering down which is you know during the summer con Mm -hmm. um surge that we're in and uh a number of them have said that this is you know they're kind of now the preferable way to attend to do these things that they they can do these 
like the telethon this weekend. They can all call, be online and do this telethon thing. Sure. The one thing I will say is, um, you know, when you are on Zoom and doing something like that, quit all your other apps, please. Um, why? Why? You know, I think people forget that. Was they John get... Billingsley like distracted or no, something? No, 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 no. It wasn't even that, and it's just the smallest detail. But having, being someone who's a mildly expert level Zoom user mm -hmm. and director and producer that I have been, uh, when you hear heal yeah, when you hear the mail icon chime when you get uh. new mail uh, in the middle of an interview, you're mm -hmm. like. Uh, couldn't we just please remind everyone to quit all their other apps, shut off their electronic devices and just be present for, yeah. um, so, you know, no criticism, but other, other than, you know, if you are doing something like a, um, an interview on zoom, no, no, for future reference in my next interview with a major publication or magazine. Yes. Or for a job interview, you should totally be, uh, quitting everything else and only have Zoom open. Uh, it's just one, one, it will reduce the pull on your internet. So you won't have other things. It'll only be Zoom focused. And then two, you won't have these annoying chimes in the middle of interview answers and things like that. So it's not improving. <laughs> the air is not improving <laughs> the Chateau Picard. Oh, God. So just, just a bit of advice to everyone who uses Zoom, which is, Almost the entire world. Um, but just something to think about. Quit those other apps. Anyway, uh, but I'm super excited. I'm hoping that uh, uh, I'm hoping that the stars who are who have signed up will still go. They uh, have only I think they only have like six, seven stars signed up. At least yeah. I mean for the site. The the two people that I really want to see that I'm convinced or have highly high doubts about them even coming are Anthony Rapp and Will Wheaton, uh, who I really would love to to meet and um, you know, talk shake to. his hand. Well, I you know I don't think anyone's shaking hands, which is also oh, kind of funny. a misnomer. Uh, you know, COVID is a respiratory disease, not a transmitted by handshakes um, and things like that. But anyway, anyway. Uh, so anyway, we'll see uh, what happens. But, yeah, it's we'll see what happens. It is. It's uh, three months away. Yeah, less than three months away. Ooh. Yes, yes, yes. That's why I'm like, we need to plan soon. We do need to plan soon. You watch, we'll plan, and then I'll cancel it. I mean, it's possible. It certainly is possible. So, all right. So, did we cover all that news? I think we got all the news. Yes. I think the major. I'm sure there's like something else, but I think we covered all the major news items. Okay. Um. But head on over to trektalks.net. Uh, What's that? That's the, where the telethon was. And I obviously be, did not participate. You did not. You were upstate. Far, I was upstate, far, upstate far New York. Away. Yes. Uh, Having but, a pleasant getaway. But la at last count, and this was yesterday, I think, uh, they have raised seventy over $73,000 for the Hollywood Food Coalition. That's amazing. So, And they've also, we've, uh, Truck Geeks has also launched a t-shirt on tractivism uh and all the proceeds what's that uh well go to <laughs> i don't even know where to send you for that tractivism so it's uh when star trek fans uh -huh. make help make a change in the world that kind of revolves around the tenets of of what star trek is all about uh, i will find out uh exactly more information on that Okay. As we move through the podcast, but we'll come back to that. But got it. But there is a T-shirt if you go to. Uh, I don't actually know where to go to. Oh uh, my we'll God. get the link. You're like a fount of information uh, right now. Right now, you know, it's margaritas and wine in my system, and also I did at least get the live recording up and running. That's true. I did not have notes prepared as I had a busy day at work. All right, so, whatever. Uh, and oftentimes... I only hear excuses, but that's fine. Oh, well, you are the king of excuses. Usually. Oh, my! Okay. So, Shots fired. Shots <laughs> have been fired. Okay. Chateau Picard is in danger. Okay, all right. Well, now that we covered the news and we've also sh fired shots at each other, um, should we talk about this week's episode of Prodigy? Let's do it.
Please, we have to give it back. Rule of acquisition number one. Once you have their money, never give it back. No! It doesn't belong to you! You weak, hopeless fool! You're too soft! Not even working the mines hardened you up! How would you know I was in the mines? <laughs> you couldn't know. They kidnapped me. Kidnapped? Ha! I sold you! Bought a partner with an actual eye for treasure! Pickbox doesn't have the mouth to muck it up! Alright, so this week's episode of Prodigy is called First Contact. They're really into these clever names, by the way. I don't know who, who it's for. It's not for the kids. I think it's more for the adults, of anything. But, yeah, I thought that was slightly clever. Um, yeah, I mean, Mike, what did you think about this episode? So, I thought it was... Uh, I thought it was good overall. I thought, you know, we got some... Talking about how this is an education for the younger audience, we learned mm -hmm. what transporters do. And they started using it. That was, so that I thought was weird because the 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 Viner definitely has transport technology. Does we he? saw him transport onto the murder planet. So I thought that that was odd that for Gwen it was such a novel thing. Hmm. That's interesting. I didn't think about Gwen in this. But I thought that the... Uh, but they're the, all like, ooh, ah, what's yeah, this? Yeah, so all the, the oohs and ahs yes. of transporter technology was was really, really cool. And I, uh, I'm glad that they did that all before the opening credits this time. So mm -hmm. so that, that was a nice touch. And then, then we learn a little bit about Dal's backstory. Not a lot. We still, so this Damon probably knows where Dal is from. And there's probably more to this story that we Who's can. Who's also, I don't know if you thought about this. It's a female captain, female Ferengi captain, who was clothed. Oh, that's a good call. Yes, and you're right. And I thought about this a lot, and I was trying to align it with when Rom became Grand Negus, and I don't know if the timelines really match up, because okay. Rom probably became Grand Negus in, what, 23, probably 2375, when DS9 ended, because Voyager got back to the Alpha Quadrant in 2378. So I was like, okay, oh, this is, if this is 2383, say Rom became Grand Nagus in 2375 and he enacted equal rights for women. I don't know if the timeline's, it, it's a little tight for me. I don't know how much time Dallas spent on this Marauder, this Frungi Marauder, um, or with this Damon, but I was kind of just like, that. I feel that that was a major thing. Like, because we, we have, other than Mugi, we haven't seen... I think one other character, the one that was in that DSN episode where it was a female Ferengi that was pretending to be male, if you remember, and she and Quark had a thing. Um, yeah. We haven't really seen many Ferengi women dressed and active in a leadership position in commerce. So not only was she a captain, she was obviously involved in trade of some sort. Um, so that was like, I was like, I need more information because that's very unusual. Um, so that really stood out to me as a Star Trek nerd. <laughs> I was trying to reconcile it all. I was like, I don't know. Fair enough. I, you know, I think one, again, remember that the audience that we're talking about is not going to know that. Sure. Um, but I feel this is, the thing is this show needs to kind of straddle both, right? It needs to straddle introing. You know, see, I don't, because I feel that we didn't get much of an intro to the Ferengi. Because if I didn't know anything about Ferengi, I'd be like, oh, this is an odd, you know, a new species we haven't seen before that we aren't getting too much information about other than their relation, their, her relationship with Dao. Um, and they really seem to be obsessed with, like, money and things like that. It's, you know, there's, we're kind of thrown into it. You know, the audience is expected to, like, kind of just pick it up. Um, so if I was someone that was new to the Star Trek universe, um, obviously I can probably put two and two together and kind of get the basics of what they're trying to tell me. But it's also kind of like, you know, it's, it's not exactly territory that we've been introduced to, I would say. So, okay. Yeah. You know, I expect to kind of just kind of catch up and it's fine. It's not like we, it's not like a deep cut or anything. 
but uh, you know, I, I think that that was just kind of interesting for them to throw this Ferengi into the story. Yeah, I mean, it's uh... and it raises more questions about Dal's background. Like, was he was he like raised in like the Alpha? I don't know where the Ferengi originated from. Like the Alpha Beta Quadrant. Like, was he some you know somewhere else? I don't know. You know, there's more mystery. Yeah, but I think we have at least a source of the mystery because I imagine that this is well. I, I'm again filling in the gaps, but we he didn't say that this is, this is where he grew up essentially. So, you know, it, it's possible that she abducted him when he was really young before he had much of a memory of where he was from, and she or her computer or that box might actually whatever that box is, which I think is also a throwback to some other thing, some other show, uh, yeah, some other episode. Uh, but I think that there is, uh, there's some information to be had. Uh, yes. Hopefully I, maybe yes. in her computer system in this ship. Uh, maybe that's something that we'll see in the second arc of 10 episodes where they'll get more of that information. I don't think we're going to get that this oh, time ago, right now, this yeah. time around, but uh, you know, it, yeah. it does give us a source to find out more about Dal if Dal wants to find out more about himself. Mm-hmm. So I think that that is, and, and I feel like someone like Zero will think of that and tell Dal that. Uh, but I also really liked, and I, I'm, you know, Zero also brings up all of Dal's doubts mm-hmm. for the audience. Right. And Dal never really denies it, but he also, it's never really. He was really... a little more chore, by the way, in this episode. Dal was. He was less like annoying. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh he was God. not. He was not. Uh, he was not his annoying self. As abrasive as yes. usual. Yes. Yeah. No. I, and uh, so I think I think zero. But zero's comments about how Dal was feeling mm-hmm. kind of went unanswered, like unresponded to, or uh, even um, uh, none of the other crew really said, "Oh, yeah." Like. Why are you having doubts? Like no one asked him, mm-hmm. and I, you know, I would think after last week's episode where Jankum sort of became the first officer, um, he did. Well, in the simulation, he was kind of oh, considered okay. the first officer. Well, no, he was an engineer. Spock was the first officer. Oh, okay. If I recall. Okay. Well, I mean, I, he was always standing beside Dal. He wasn't doing he was anything. Hovering. He was hovering, and then when he got kicked out, Dal went on another engineer. So. Okay, yeah. But, you mean, Jankum didn't do anything engineering no, during, he was the, during the first whatever. 80 explosions or whatever, uh, or failures of the Kobayashi Maru test. But, um, you know, so I I just, I, I was kind of surprised by that. I, as I was rewatching today, Zero brings up those doubts that Dal has, and no one says anything about it. And so I was kind of kind of surprised by that. Um but I thought, you know, introducing them to a new species and doing all of that was interesting. I thought the species was interesting. Yeah. I thought the planet was interesting. I loved how they thought it was a murder, another murder planet, uh-huh. uh, which, you know, is is kind of hilarious because it was really it was really alien and it was really mm-hmm. kind of crazy. Um, but I loved how in the end uh, the transporter kind of saved the day. So we kind of get that great. This was a a case of great storytelling where we are introduced to it at the beginning and yes. it kind of, it comes back in the end and saves both Dal and the crystal. Yes. Uh, so these are really smart kids, obviously, uh, who understand how to run a transporter and, you know, Dal beamed on board and immediately took over and did all of that transporting. So, you know, th- this is a really smart crew. And, uh, so I'm, ho- you know, I, oh, I thought and that was nice. Talk, like Gwen had her moment. Now she's a comms officer. And she was able to figure out how to communicate with the aliens. Oh, right. Yeah. You know, so I'm glad that we got a little bit of her time to shine. Yeah. Well, she she read the Klingon uh, on the the cloaking device, uh, which needed Chimeria, which was on the planet that they uh, came from. Uh, But I didn't realize that they had a source of Chimerium on the ship, which is interesting. Uh, yeah, I was like, I guess they took some while they were trying desperately to, to escape. escape. Like, I don't, I was like, sure. Yeah, where did the Chimera, but anyway. I don't recall them hauling any. I don't either. Uh, crystals to the yeah. ship, but okay. Okay, uh, so there was that kind of eh, loophole, like, lack of story in there. Uh, 
yeah, I just I thought it was an enjoyable episode. It has some great character moments for everyone. Uh, you know, one thing I did not like though, I did not like. I don't remember, you know, her name, the the Frankie. Um, but I didn't really like that we kind of went back to this very traditional Frankie, just like kind of a greedy, you know, like just devious kind of Frankie character uh, archetype which I feel we tried very hard in DS9 to change and dismantle. I that That's one thing. I understand that they needed some sort of, like, caricature to drive the story forward, but I kind of wish they gave her more complexity because, basically, it just turns out that she's devious, she wants the crystals, she's sold out into slavery. Like, I was just like, this is very, like, TNG season two, like, Ferengi, you know? And I wish there was a little bit more to her character. Yeah, so it's Damon, Damon, Nandy. Nandy is Nandy is her name. All right. Yeah. Um, yeah, I agree. Uh, you know, it was also the same type of ship that was mm-hmm. from like the a, first a very season. Traditional Frank Marauders yeah. uh, style. Yeah. The Decara class Marauder. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah i you know good call i did not pick up on that but that's a really good call out uh to some of that but you know i guess we don't know her backstory no uh we don't know how i just wish it was a little bit more too because she's the same in this episode she was very two-dimensional and also she doesn't have a crew it's just her and the bot and a droid yeah running it's... that big ship mm-hmm. uh so the big ship that kind of takes on a galaxy class ship and the protostar is smaller than Voyager. Mm-hmm. Uh, so there's a little bit of weird dynamics with that. Like, But obviously she beamed off stuff and took took stuff from them uh, because their shields were down. Uh, but anyway, yeah, I, you know, so I, I agree. There's some, some of that archetype. I think, I think it was nice though, that it was a woman captain. Uh, I think that it, you know, it, feels like it was the mother i put in air quotes of dal right um but uh yeah you know the more and more i think about this and 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 how i think about this is being a potential adoptive parent myself and dennis you know this is the type of situation that you often find adopted kids are in um you know where they're they you know, they are abused or they, there's a lot of PTSD. And I Mm -hmm. think that, um, especially foster kids. Yeah. 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 And I guess that, yeah, she, you know, Dal might be closer to a foster kid for Mm -hmm. Damon Nandy than, than not, but we don't know their whole backstory. Um, so yeah, I just think that this is, there's some definite adoptive adoption, you know, adopted kid, um, issues going on here that they're right. sort of uh bringing up so that I, re- I think this goes back to one of the things that i think we talked about at the beginning of this series uh very similar to what we've also gotten in discovery where it's this idea of chosen family right which i think Gwen kind of brings up yeah in this episode as well where they've both been estranged in different ways from mm-hmm. the parents and the yeah in, in the, and it takes time to accept know. that she and said. yeah it takes time to get and get over that and to, and she's still getting over that for sure is what she said to him right the other thing she said to him she called him out on or she's when they f- went to where he stayed on the marauder which is underneath the engines uh-huh she found the portal that he saw Mm -hmm. the world through for the longest time. And obviously that harkens, she calls out, you know, all the stories that he told her about all the things he saw Mm -hmm. over time. So um, I think that was interesting. And he sort of like embarrassingly shrugs it off, Mm -hmm. uh, which I thought was uh, both cute. And again, you know, people aren't, the rest of the crew aren't really picking up on, these sort of cues, especially Rock Talk and uh, Jankum, who let Damon Nandy know that they have a bunch of Chimerium on their ship. Right. Uh, so clearly, uh, being secretive and uh, you know maybe Dal should have given a little more context before beaming over with them and said, "Let's not talk about anything that's on this ship." Right. Um, that would have been a good good plan, I think, for them to do, but. Uh, but oh well. Oh well. Uh, so, yeah, I thought it was a 
good episode. Uh, at the end, we see that there's a kind of an what is it? What is it? Uh, there's when, a bounty. There's a bounty, right? Yes, yeah, on, English. On English, it's hard when you've been drinking. But I also was thinking, I was thinking more of the police APB, uh, all points bulletin oh. on the Proto Star. But you're you're more correct in that there's a bounty out there for the Proto Star. This is the thing, though. Even though I I, I want to see how this span, like how this you know turns out, but there's still four thousand light years from where right, they were before. Yeah, Even if there's still, a bounty on them, just... how is I don't really see how the Varnas are gonna catch up with them. It's ridiculous, but I'm sure. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I think also that the fact that that bounty has reached four thousand light years away, I think. Yeah, I mean that's. I mean that's one thing that's very convenient about Star Trek, where it's like communication is near instantaneous. <laughs> right. Yes. Um, which obviously I have issues with because it defies the laws of physics. Um, but even if yeah, I, I don't. I don't know. I don't know how that could communi- that bothered me too. How did the communication get out there? so quickly but whatever yeah no that's uh definitely even uh, with self space radio four thousand light years is a long way to travel yeah yeah i agree i think it's one of those things that you kind of have to forgive yeah uh but what because it moves the story forward right exactly and the, the details that we pay attention to are not the details that Correct. the targeted audience will pay attention Correct. to. Correct. i mean um, i don't mind this episode was fine i thought this episode was fine it gave us a little bit of background on dow it gave us what are you pointing at what no i thought of something else but keep going oh i was yeah gave us it moved the story forward a little bit in terms of the relationship between the different characters of the crew and then also setting up the next steps for the diviner finding the protostar speaking so, of the yeah. diviner and deadlock or dreadnought oh yes the so janeway, janeway figures yes. out that the boarding party of the protostar she zooms Shocking. in and uh, was dread. I don't understand. I was like, why didn't they zoom in? Like, the first thing I would do is zoom in. And, hey, computer, can you zoom in and enhance? Like, that would be the first thing I would ask. And took it took us forever to get there. And she has like, why? Only Janeway knows this. So Janeway but, and us. But of course, of course, the rest of the crew isn't there. So they are not there to recognize Dreadnought. Right. And Janeway not. has no idea who Dreadnought is. Right. So it's like, okay. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yep. Um, you know. But I thought that was another interesting piece. So next week's episode, according to Memory Alpha, is called A Mock Time. Oh, uh, my God. Uh, they're really, I'm telling you, they're really into these puns. For oh, sorry. No, no, not A Mock Time. Time A Mock. Oh, my God. So. I can't. Um, every, tomorrow. It's like every episode. I mean, I, I, I'm having fun with it, but, you know, obviously yeah. it's for the fans, not for the kids. Right, yeah, yeah. So that's, uh, and if you can hear the whining in the background, we have our third co host here, Hamish, <laughs> whining from the kitchen. Oh. Um, he wants so attention and love. He, do, he does want attention and love. He does not like being apart. So I'm going to go take the gate down. But uh, right other, now, why? It'll be fine. He'll sit next to me. It'll be okay. If he pees all over me, I'm going to like. <laughs> Stop in the face. All right, so we should we should give some context. So when we went to dinner, when he came back, Hamish was excited to see me. So excited uh, that he's still he's still a puppy, six and a half months old. He excited excited peas when he when we come back home. And I was like frozen. You I were was like, frozen. I don't want to move. I don't want to touch yes, the pee. He will not do that. He will not do that again. I don't want to step in the urine. Yes, no. I am not a fan. So, well, Mike's going to go and release the dog from his cage, I guess. But, okay, well, I guess that does it for this episode. Um, if Seriously, if that dog pees on me or licks <laughs> me, I am not going to be pleased. <laughs> he will not. Come here. Okay, you better not lick my shoes. No, nope, it's all good. He's going to just, he's going to lay here next to me and be a good puppy. It'll all be fine. So, what's next? Um, are we done talking about the episode? Is that everything? Yeah, I think we've covered everything. Um, cool. Well, do we want to do a little bit of off-topic? I feel like there's I mean, a lot of stuff that we've <laughs> yeah, been doing. It's not a little bit of off-topic. It's, it's a lot of off-topic. We've been doing a lot outside of Star Trek. Yeah, we have. I mean, That is a big dog. He's gotten really large. <laughs> he is. For Yes, he is. He's going to start chewing on the microphone. No, he won't chew on the microphone. It's all good. Um, I mean, he's cute as long as he doesn't lick me or pee on me, <laughs> or touch me with his nose, which is kind of wet and disgusting. <laughs> so you are just not a dog person. I mean, I'm not into bodily fluids. 
<laughs> We're going to have to see what happens when, you know, I actually get a boyfriend. I don't know. I how don't know what's you know, going to happen. I don't know either. what's going to happen. Um, I'm like, yeah, can you deal with the body fluids some other way? <laughs> um, but we will we'll see what, what happens. Cross that bridge when we get there, right? Yes. One step at a time. Yes. So, um, so yeah, Mike, what have you been watching and enjoying other than Star Trek? Well, I think uh, we both have enjoyed and been sad at the end of what I will want to say is, uh, sadly, one of the few science fiction shows out there, The Expanse, uh, that are oh really like hard, good space sci- science fiction shows. So good. Uh, but it's not just the space and the science. It's just like they've done such a great job with the characters yeah. and making them like real grounded people with you know really complicated characters that and they've just done such a good job i you know i i know i told you upon watching the finale like i was like i made the comparison which is not apples to apples but i was like it is such the expanse is such a better show than discovery but i honestly believe that in every way it is a better show than discovery the action scenes are insane like and they don't even need all the fireworks. I've said this before. They don't need all the special effects. They just somehow make it just so intense and so believable. Like, and you can really feel the stakes. That's the thing. You can really feel the stakes of these action scenes that I don't oftentimes feel with Discovery, where it's just so overblown and it's just like there's so much going on. And these characters, you know, when they have these emotional moments it's earned, you know, they're really earned moments of growth, of heartache, even I get affected. And that's rare, you know, like, I really believe that these characters are feeling what they're feeling. And I as a viewer, am sensing that. So it's just like, there's so many things about it that just make it in my mind, one of the best sci-fi series in the last decade, uh, that, you know, I, it's hard for me to not compare this to the discovery, which you talk about so much. And I'm just like, I wish this is is because I want Star Trek to be better. You know, it's I want Star Trek to be more real um, versus where sometimes I just feel it's it's about the spectacle. It's so much about the spectacle or we're told like and I said, I've said this before, we're told how we're supposed to feel versus like we're actually feeling what these characters are feeling. I mean, I think I think the expanse falls into a genre called hard, more hard sci-fi. Mm-hmm. Correct. Yeah. Uh, versus Discovery and Star Trek don't fall into that kind of genre, uh, you know. So I think that that's part of the difference. I also think that the the timeline and the story for the expanse is more based in uh, what our reality is today. Um, no, that's and, a good point. There's and, and more projecting out yeah. and projecting out what space travel and the universe would look like like mm-hmm. we're not gonna like scientifically we're not gonna develop warp speed probably um unless some alien technology comes to us but so i think living in our solar system and having these adventures slash conflicts mm-hmm. you know with the mars colony with the belters i think that that's all very realistic and and probable it's, it's sort of taking what we're experiencing here on Earth with, you know, China, Russia, and the U.S. Mm-hmm. and throwing it out into space, essentially. And so that's more realistic to me. It's also hard sci-fi. So, you know, more of the laws of the universe, the true scientific laws, like gravity and, mm-hmm. you know, speed and travel and all of that is more realistic than it is in Star Trek with impulse engines and warp drive and and sure proto warp and all of those things so i think that the the two are very different in that sense so but at the end of the day it's about you know i think what is in what what star trek has been really effective is kind of and i know this is a trope but it's kind of questioning the human condition right it's questioning about what it means to be human what it means to strive to be better and i think that the expanse has done a really good job of elaborating on that and star trek has as well I don't know if it's done as much as recently because I feel that Star Trek has really veered into spectacle. You know, it has really veered into much more, trying to be more like Star Wars, in my opinion, where, at least traditional Star Wars, where it's been much more about 
the explosions and the action um, versus really diving deeper into what it means to be human. And I'm not saying it doesn't. It, I'm not saying it, it hasn't, but I feel that The Expanse has just done such a great job of doing that. And where Star Trek are really good in TNG, and you know, especially even in season two TNG, like if we were to look at Measure of Man and also DS9 is where it really brought a lot of shades of gray to Gene Roddenberry's universe. Mm -hmm. And it's like, what does it mean to want to be good and want to be better, but knowing that you can't always have it all, you know, can't always have that all the time. So I think that that's what I feel Star Trek, that's where Star Trek has really shown me, in my opinion. And I know that I've been very critical about Discovery. And the reason why is because I want Star Trek to be better. You know, I miss that kind of subtlety um, that we haven't, I feel, gotten in as much recent Star Trek. Yeah, no, I, I, I take to your point about, uh, you know, wanting Star Trek to be better. That that totally makes sense. And uh, that's uh, that's a good point. You know, you do want the, the characters and the, 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 the story to be a little bit more well-developed and, and, and uh, structurally more interesting okay why is he still whining he's like in your lap <laughs> he he's a very vocal dog so it's uh it's interesting his yawns often turn into whines oh um yeah so you know I, I think um but he's happy he's he's with us and so less whining in general but yes the, <laughs> the yawning is uh, is a typical thing from him but uh you know, so I think it's hard for it's hard for me to compare the Expanse and Discovery, because uh, I think they're two different stories and they're two different things. Um, Is he farting? No, he's just I don't know why. You, can you can you? We didn't ask for a third host this week. I don't know why. You're being so. Like, what does that sound? Is he farting? Like no, is it that was something that was else. Grunting. That was grunting. Grunting. Yeah, his, his farts don't don't sound. They smell. So if you, you'll know when he farts. Got it. Um, so, you know, I don't really compare the two, um, but I do like your comment about wanting Star Trek to be better. Uh, and, not, and, and your point about, you know, making us, telling us how we should feel versus making us feel. I think that's an important point that you've made. Um, but, you know, I, I, I think that the expanse has just been really great about having really complex characters. Mm -hmm. And if you think about it, even this season, like we actually didn't get that much narrative momentum. Like not that much happened. A lot of it was just about how the characters were bouncing off each other. Yeah. You know, no, I, I mean, honestly, Avrasarala is one of the most interesting, complex, amazing women leaders of modern sci-fi. Uh, you know, it's, uh, you know, I, I, there are parts of me that want to go back to Vegas and, and see, <laughs> you know, she was there and I, you know, I like, kind sure, of like, come on, you know, I, I, yeah, I really wanted her, you know, now I really want to talk to her. Uh, so there's that. And um, so is he looking himself? Is he binding off his stitches? Like what's happening? <laughs> no, I mean, he's probably cleaning something, but I don't know. Yeah. So I, you know, I, I think she's amazing. You know, Stephen Strait's character, um, which why is Holden? Holden, thank you, um, is a really complex character. Yeah, and he's a man from Earth who can balance between the Earth, the Mars, mm -hmm. and the Belters, and which is why he was chosen to be president of this new right uh, union. And um, I think that spoilers. Uh, Spoilers, yeah, uh, yeah. You'll, you'll, you, yeah. You won't figure that out really till the end. But um, if you haven't watched it yet, uh, but yeah, I think uh, he's a really complex character. I think Naomi is a really complex character. Oh my god! Especially yeah, when it comes so to you know her sort of being mad at Holden for for not um, not killing. Uh, Marco. Marcos, thank you. Marcos, Marcos, right? Marco Narius. Yeah. Um, when he had a chance. Right. Like, honestly, like, I think that that, that shows a development because she really wanted to leave. Remember in mm -hmm. season five, she really wanted to leave and go see Philip. And then um, she, uh, she, uh, 
was mad at Holden for not blowing up the ship, and he did it because he saw Philip next to next to Marcos on the screen as they were talking. And so I think that um, there's that piece. Uh, Bobby is another. I mean, oh they're God. they're you know Amos. They're they're all just. It's every character has their journey and has had their journey, mm-hmm. and has been really amazing about it. So. You know, I think that um, even even we saw uh, so Clarissa right came on. Clarissa, uh, yeah. Clarice or Clarissa? Clarissa. Clarissa uh, came on at the end of season five, right? He br- brings uh, Amos brings her on board to Holden's chagrin, and mm-hmm. um, she becomes a really important part of this right. crew. Mm-hmm. So I think uh, you where know, she wanted to kill Holden like three seasons ago. Right, she wanted to kill Holden three seasons ago, and she. You know, she does have these implants and, you know, there's an interesting dynamic between her and Amos. So right. it's just kind of an all around um, kind of interesting, uh, interesting crew. And, uh, you know, yeah, that's the thing. Everyone's just so well fleshed out, you know. Yeah. I Even... think the only the only kind of typical character is the reporter who, you know, sure. she's kind of like. Yeah, you know, yeah. I'm not too thrilled with her, but um, she's kind of basic. And um, so, yeah, I, I think the characters are great. The situation is great. I mean, they wrapped up a they did do, they did a fairly good job of wrapping up such a moderately complex mm-hmm. plot line. Uh, I mean, they did do some what I would say some injustice to the Laconia thing, other than like the proto molecule. Yeah, the proto molecule story is still kind of out there. Um, but, uh, you know, there's, there's that piece of it. There's what else did they kind of leave? Um, it was mostly that it was mostly, mostly that the, the gates, it, what's yeah. going on with the gates, the yeah. multiple gates. I mean, I feel the, I mean, what I think, at, Oh, the, the energy, gate creatures, whatever they are. The, yes. The energies. Entities. Yeah. Thank you. I think the main thing is, you know, at the end of the day, it's really about the characters. That's the thing about the expanse that I really liked is that, it's about these human beings and yeah. oops you Ooh. almost spilled chateau picard all over the table and that would have been a shame uh almost over my computer yeah that, that would be been, more that would be of a shame but this is why i think the you know why i compare the expanse to discovery sometimes because in many ways the expanse just does such a great job kind of focusing on the characters and studying these characters versus kind of because yeah, sometimes the plot takes almost a you know a back seat to the character development, and I just think that I I don't know it's the kind of storytelling that really I think is compelling to me. It might not be the fastest narrative storytelling, but it's what makes it interesting at the end of the day. Yeah, it's a complex story with complex characters, and they focus more on the characters than the complex story, but the. The complex story sort of works around the characters. Right. It never like overwhelms it never, the characters. Yeah. Which I really respect. Um, I think that from a storytelling perspective, it's probably easier to kind of have these big things happen and have the characters kind of be brought along for the ride versus kind of letting the characters kind of shine alongside the story. Yeah. So yeah. going back to Discovery, I feel that sometimes it gets very unbalanced. Like, you know, sometimes there's so much going on in the story. There's so much narrative momentum that sometimes these characters make decisions that I personally are, I'm finding like not always consistent or like, you know, like why are they making these kinds of decisions or like what's going on? I think we meet these assumptions. Like sometimes we, we and I have arguments about like, why, why are they thinking like this? Why are they saying this? Why are they doing this? And it's like, you know, it's like, we're trying to like mine, like what these, how these characters might be thinking and what is governing their decision-making um, and sometimes we're just guessing. Sometimes we're just like, we think it's because of this. You know? Yeah, we're fill- we're filling in the gaps. But also, I think that, and this is one thing that we've talked about multiple times with Bryce and with um, uh, Reese and, <laughs> and with, so what's their names? With what are their names Olo again? and with Detmer. Detmer, yeah. Um, you know, the bridge crew kind of get these expositionary details told so about the about their background and about their 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 history that 
impacts the story at a very like it's like throwing it's a, very superficial. a pebble yeah, yeah. It's, it's a pebble in the in the pond in in the lake in the ocean uh that really doesn't do too much and, and just does even more disservice to the characters themselves i feel so there is that i think uh you know discovery could definitely take some some notes from the expanse on character development and creating situations uh that are complex, uh, having a complex plot that doesn't overwhelm the complexity right. and the development of the characters. I think that is the point that we're both making right. about uh, comparing the two. But I also don't personally, I know you're comparing the two more so than right. I am, but because they kind of fall into the same general genre. That's really why. Yeah. I can't space, help it. Hi, you know, sci-fi, yeah. you know, uh, space sci-fi or basically like, you know, you're putting humans into this like really like crazy situation yeah. outside of our norm. Yeah. And that's really sometimes what sci-fi is, sci-fi fantasy is about, you know, like putting, like trying to mirror like real world, like real world problems into right. like these like fantastical situations. Yeah. And then how do the humans react to it? How do they respond to it? How do they become better people? Yeah. And I think that's what kind of govern, that's why sci-fi fantasy is kind of like this bucket. It's because like it's supposed to mirror our world, but in a really different way. Yeah. Um, but at the end of the day, I think it needs to kind of, for it to be effective, it needs to kind of mirror, quote unquote, the human condition and question it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And I think obviously this expanse focuses much more on the human condition versus, right. versus the. Oh my God. The, their dog is a loud drinker. <laughs> like laughing that water like nothing. Uh, I think all dogs are loud it's drinkers. Yeah. Uh, anyway, so there's the expanse. So we've been watching Sad that. It's over. Sad it's over, yes. Yeah. Uh, in fact, we were talking, there really is no other um, sci-fi show, although you've mentioned Foundation, which I have Foundation, not watched. Foundation, which is good. I don't know if it's like the big, sci- the big sci-fi show that can fill the expensive shoes, in my opinion, but it's still very epic. I feel like Foundation falls into the Dune category, which is more sci-fi fantasy than sci-fi. Uh, uh, how about but, you watch it and then get back to me? Okay, sure. Yeah, <laughs> sure. Watch it and get back. Let um, me know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, write a book report. Sure. Uh, yeah, I'll get right on that amongst all my other duties and, and projects. Uh, so there's, uh, I think that there's kind of the lack of that. What else have I been watching? Uh, so we've talked about The Expanse. I have, I have rewatched all of phase one of the Marvel movies. Oh my god! Yeah, I went back and I started to watch Iron Man, and then that became Iron Man Two, and then I went on into the other Phase One movies, including finally Avengers uh, a few days ago, and so watch all of oh my those. God, that's a lot of hours. Yeah, I mean, again, during cooking when I'm not doing, you know, when there's not a lot of other things, so I watched that. We're, we don't need to rehash that, but I think the other sci-fi show that is uh, interesting that um, came out on Christmas Day, which I didn't get to watch until probably two weeks ago, was The Silent Sea. Yes. Yes, it was. So yes, which uh, I recommended, but I guess that was on your list already. It was on. Yeah, it was on my list already. I had yes. somehow come across it on Instagram and had already added it to my queue, and it came out on Christmas Day, mm-hmm. so I saw it on Instagram, but I hadn't watched it yet, and then when things ran dry or during my false COVID times is when I, uh, false, co- <laughs> false COVID, COVID, false COVID positive time, mm-hmm. uh, of five and a half days. I did end up watching that. Yeah. Um, which is good. It was good. It was I mean, it good. It wasn't amazing, but I liked it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It wasn't, I wouldn't say it was perfect and it's yeah. definitely, definitely, uh, I wouldn't say that the, I, I, I think that the characters, there are a couple of, Obviously, there are some very basic archetypes in this show. And then there are the two main characters, the captain and this Dr. Sung, which was really hard for me as a Doctor Who fan to hear her be called Dr. Oh, Sung. Oh, Dr. Dr. Sung, yeah. yeah um, but she also has a very limited range of emotion from, <laughs> um, from depressed to s- terribly sad. And uh, so I wasn't that impressed with her. And the actor who played the uh, captain was familiar to me. He's been he, in something else. Uh, he was in um, he was in that other Korean series. Oh, the Squid Game? Was he yes. In, was he in Squid Game? He was the recruiter. Oh, the guy who threw the envelope. Oh, threw the envelope. Right, 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 right. 
So, uh, but yeah, I thought the story overall, a mysterious station searching for water. I mean, obviously, again, so, oh, as I was watching this, I, I, I realized that, you know, Japanese, Korean, probably even some Chinese sci-fi really focus on drought as a major issue facing humanity. Uh, and, and they've done this oh. for, I would say, 50 years. And, and why I say 50 years is because... Uh, uh, space battleship Yamato, which is one of my favorite um, animes of all time, before it was really called anime, um, focused on a planet that was dying from lack of water. Uh, so I, I'm just finding that a lot of sci-fi, you know, sci-fi shows from Asia that talk about near or you know more realistic sci-fi talk about drought and water and uh, re. re- reseeding the earth or helping the earth and so i thought that that was interesting that was an interesting realization to me huh. was this was also focused on drought and rationing of water and uh things like that so uh it's it's a great story it's an you know i thought it was a very compelling story uh there are some boring archetypes for our, the secondary characters um and there are some things that aren't completely explained that you kind of had to fill in a little bit. Right. Uh, still enjoyed it. Yeah, still enjoyed yeah. it. Eight, eight episodes. That was well done. Eight episodes, yeah. yeah. Um, kudos to South Korea for having two of the top Netflix shows. Not in... North Korea. South Korea. No, yeah. I, I said South Korea. I know, I know. I'm just saying yeah. not North Korea. I was going to say Korea, and then I had no, to clarify. Like South Korea. So, but Korean... Uh, shows so kudos right. to them they're, i mean they they're definitely uh on the more um what's the word i'm looking for um I don't know. depressing side of life like the um sure i mean there's a plenty of depressing american sci-fi i need, i want to watch station 11 have you heard about the show i have i've read the book so oh. So it's it looks depressing. It, yes, yes, it does not look. Uh, <laughs> it, it looks potentially triggering uh, in our uh, COVID yeah, times. In our COVID times, I think you know. I read this book before COVID times. Um, I, I don't have strong remembrances of the book, other than it the, didn't do the, the show. Got really good reviews. I mean, it, it, so the book doesn't do these flashbacks to current time or whatever the mm. pre time was. Uh, so it's all about life in the after the after post-apocalyptic time. post up yeah yeah um so that's sort of that that threw me that that takes a lot of licensing you know mm-hmm. um so but I, I may check it out i'm not sure having read the book i don't think and also you know american uh drama like this does not really interest me it's too real too real and you know honestly tv for me is an escape from sure. reality so um given that we live in new york city we get a lot of reality so um so uh, you know i i don't know if i'll check it out you know hbo, HBO shows is not recommending it to me so oh of course they do they want yeah. you to watch it uh but so yeah we'll we'll see i may i may check it out um but another it, show that i that's also hbo that i have been tempted to go back to but i'm like to, to speak to what you're saying, I, I don't know if I need... I'm okay with sad and depressing, but Euphoria, did you watch? I've not watched Euphoria. I can't remember if that's the one I uh, was recommended by a friend to watch. It's good, but it's dark shit. Like, it is, like, oh, depressing. Mate. There's, like, a lot of, like, suicide, Ooh. like, like drugs... Um, depression. Is, is there any porn involved or soft There's porn? There's a lot of nudity. Okay. This, um, this may be the show that I'm looking quickly to see if this is the show that... Um, I mean, I I watched it for a season. I liked it. It was, like, kind of sad and depressing. And it premiered on HBO. Oh, like, yeah. Euphoria. Yeah, two, yep. two weeks ago. And I have not dived back in. Because I'm like... Not that I need a lot of escapist content right now, but I'm kind of just like, I don't know, all these characters are just so depressed. They're so angry at themselves. They like are suicidal. They're like unhappy. Like, I, I don't know if I need all of that right this second. Like, yeah, this is a lot. I, I think you have to choose what's mentally good for you. 
uh, and why you watch TV or a show is is for escapism from reality. And if reality is a little um, too real for you right now, which it can be if you read the news, um, then you know I, I I don't know that I I need more like I need more Wheel of Time type fantasy. Which yeah, I'm watching Snowpiercer that just came out on HBO Max. I think the first. The, the Two first seasons. first yeah the yeah. first season was on tnt i think yeah but now both season one season two are on hbo okay. max so okay. i'm kind of going through that okay it's not bad uh, i mean it's I, sci-fi I've... the jennifer Connelly's great okay all right i mean i've, yeah, I've seen it's... the movie i don't know that it um gets any more exciting than that or it, the first episode resonates with the movie and then it goes off in a completely different direction oh okay yeah. all right does it all take place on a train? Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> yes, correct. Uh, um, okay, so there's that to possibly check out. Uh, so you're giving me more to check out, but so far nothing's super... Um, I mean, you got to watch Foundation. That's what I'm saying. You got to watch Foundation in the morning show season two. Yes, but we've, we've talked about me adding more services. Just add a month. Uh, Just do it for a month. I'm not even. I'm not asking for the blood of your firstborn. It's like four ninety nine. Yeah. No. It's um. Do you want, do you want me to give you five dollars? <laughs> no. It's not even about that. It's just you know. It's it's just signing up for something and then not watching it. You're gonna watch it. You're gonna have plenty to watch between Foundation and the Morning Show and where are you going? Oh. The, okay. It's a dog. And um, what else has come? Don't watch Invasion. That that shit's dumb. It was so bad. But it got re- Invasion did get renewed for season two. So I don't I don't know. Whatever. I'm not in a rush to watch the rest. Of the- what is okay? It's not play with your dog time. It is time for us to record our podcast. I am trying to distract the dog so he will... Just let him do his shit. Just, like, let him do his shit. I had to go get his ball, which had gone out of uh, out of the way. And I was trying to rush back here, and then he saw me running and wanted to chase after me. That's all. I'm not technically playing with him. I was trying to get his ball, which rolled out of his reach. And, yes, this is, you know, this is life with a pet sometimes. He is extremely annoying, and when it's just me... Uh, because Dennis is away, um, this is what happens. So, uh, yeah, so there's a lot. Do you think he's wondering, like, where is this other person? Like, So he goes crazy when we're on FaceTime, and he can hear Dennis, but he, um, he looks around and kind of, like, goes crazy, like, where is that voice coming from? Where is he? Where is he? Aww. And wants to look for him. So That's it's, cute. But the last two nights we have not done that because uh, it gets him really wound up. And it's hard to calm down. So, uh, anyway. So, yeah. That's life with a pet. Um, and it's, you know, it's 10 o'clock. And uh, we're just shy of our nighttime walk here before going to bed. So He has uh, to have another walk? Yes. We have. We have. Uh, yes. Wow. Yes. It'll, right. it'll make it so he can. So, actually, I can not have to get up at, like, 7 in the morning. Oh, and God take him out so well, there we go anyway so and then the other thing i think i'm watching that we've talked about is just like that yeah which i'm personally very much enjoying i am too there's a lot of haters out there but i personally really like it yes we we did talk about a review that i read about the diwali episode that really irritated me because it was written by a millennial slash gen zer who well, was Indian so of Indian, like Indian descent? Indian, Indian descent, descent and uh, just felt like it gave the short shift to the whole Diwali thing and didn't understand why a woman who is in her fifties is still affected by her Indian parents. Uh, so it's just uh, I thought it was a little. I mean, uh, you know, I'm I'm a white guy, so I can't really say too much about um about that but well i think her main her main treatise was that there should be there could have been more right yeah absolutely like, but but it was only one it was only carrie and her realtor who were right. kind of doing this part of the story and so um right 
I, you know, I mean, they were just like it could have been so less tropey and more like, oh, like you know, let's let's do something that's that. <laughs> this dog is very <laughs> distracting. <laughs> yes, um, that defies the expectations of the standard Indian tropes, which is like get married, like why you know while you're old, like you know, which we've definitely seen in a lot of Indian dramas. Yeah, sure. I, I'm just wondering, like. And this this reviewer, I don't remember her name, and I'm not going to call her out on it. But you know, uh, does does she, do she, does she have really progressive accepting parents who are not like this? I don't know her life. No, I know. Neither do I. But it, it just felt like she was being extremely judgmental of of another generation. Mm-hmm. And and I read the review before I'd even watched the episode, and I just thought it was just very kind of tone i honestly i thought it was kind of tone deaf and and kind of like how heavy is this dog uh almost 40 pounds oh, wow. yeah you can get a good workout pulling your, your whatever you're flexing there uh 40 pounds is nothing <laughs> oh, oh excuse us <laughs> i'm glad to say uh, like, he's very active he's very active and very strong so yeah. uh i don't know i just i i got triggered by i just thought it was kind of super judgmental from a 20 something saying what a 50 something's life should be like well we don't know her experience it's like i was saying to you like if like a show just did a very superficial job of representing like gay people i think we'd be like we would probably eye roll i know i don't know if we write like a full article about it but yeah we probably kind of have commentary about it but after watching the episode i will say that you know the the diwali part of this episode only comprised like five minutes of the show right of a but 40- i think that was our other problem that it was like they try to sell the Diwali as a central piece of the episode. And I see, and as I, as I was saying it to you at dinner, I think that the whole idea of Diwali was this, this balance between light and dark that all of the characters are kind of going through. Um, they're all trying to be... Um, they're all facing situations where they can be the light or they're facing darkness. And I think that that was the more meaningful part of why they chose this title for the episode. Um, so... So that's, that's an interesting interpretation. So that that's my interpretation, but you know, I'm not a TV critic. I am just a guy with a mic on a with opinions and with notes. opinions and notes. So uh, anyway, yeah, I've enjoyed it. Uh, I think it's dealt with grief really, yes, I really totally well. Yes. Uh, grief has been covered really well here. I also mm. am really into the um, Miranda storyline of mm-hmm. self-discovery right i and and also in i think the last two episodes they've really delved into rose's story yes of it's, it's uh, very it's very woke and yeah i mean That's woke some, or yeah. or current i would say that you know knowing uh, at least one possibly two uh, i'm trying to think who the second one is uh parents who are dealing with this sort of situation um it's uh it's certainly uh prescient and it's uh current and i mm-hmm. think it's i think it's real um so i'm really enjoying that because you know as a potential adoptive father right. i think it's um good to be kind of aware of these things and sure. and i think um you know seeing seeing the family kind of go through this and and i would probably feel the same way if uh i was told through other parents and and not through my own child that they decided to change their pronouns and their name. Mm-hmm. I think that that would have been uh, bothersome to me a little bit too. But yeah, Miranda's storyline is interesting. It's definitely like you know, discover. I've, I've known people who have gone through that where it's a they're in their fifties and they're like, wait a minute, they're I'm, unhappy I, with where they are. Yeah, I'm life, unhappy, or... and am I even straight? Like you know, like yeah. you know, that's definitely that's definitely a real thing. Um, so yeah. I do think her, yeah, her storyline is definitely compelling and I'm, I don't know, I don't know how I feel about Che. I feel Che's a little annoying, but like, whatever. She's more of a, she's more of a narrative device in my mind for Miranda to discover herself, but whatever. Yeah, I think she's, she's a bit extreme, but, um, but yeah, I think, uh, I think I like the character. I like that they've really sh- shaken it up a lot and added these new characters in, um, obviously Willie Garcon has passed on. And so, right. um, his partner has kind of taken over the fourth spot of the threesome of the, the three women. Um, 
And uh, I was also, I felt for um, Carrie when she reached out to Samantha and she said, I miss you. And there mm-hmm. wasn't that, there was kind of that ah, empty space there's of no response. Yeah, there was no response. Um, so I felt for, for Carrie in that situation, but I was happy that she kind of reached out to Samantha and had that connection again, Yeah. but it didn't obviously didn't lead anywhere, uh, other than to more kind of upset and, and they, they really jumped around with time. Like we're ti- like, it's almost been a year. Oh, it's been confused. Yeah. The yeah. time is a little confusing. I don't time, even know. Time's been a little confusing in this, but it's like, or is it like discovery? Is there time travel? Yeah, I mean, there definitely is, but I also think they had to do that because grief does take a a right. lot of time and mm-hmm. we don't need to see Carrie going through yeah. day after day of the same grief. Well, that happened in the first uh, Sex and City movie where, if you recall, Big left her at the altar and oh, yeah. she spent half the movie just depressed. Yeah, yeah. I think, well, good good for them for learning from that because I don't yeah. think that was very exciting. But, uh, yeah, so I'm enjoying just like that. Um, right. I, I think it's fun to, to watch a bunch of, uh, a group of ladies in their... 50s go through um you know exploring life and um so i think that that's uh that's a good thing so uh that's pretty much what i've been watching i'm trying to think if there's anything else i did oh i did tell you that i did sign up during my covid times of uh brit i did sign up for brit box and watched a bunch of classic doctor who uh because i was feeling nostalgic and i just needed some comfort uh, mm-hmm. watching so i did watch a bunch of classic doctor who of fourth and fifth doctor mm-hmm. stuff so before my trial ran out and i did not re- renew because i did not want another charge subscription charge to There's so many. to manage oh so which is why uh speaking of doctor who the modern doctor who dennis and i did watch series 13 and then the, the new year's special but we watched it by other means rather than signing up because uh, it was actually pretty challenging to watch it here in the u.s if you did not have bbc america yeah. or live tv bbc america so um so yeah so that's what i've been watching i've read i've read a few books uh including uh, i've just finished alex white's a, Revenant? uh well no so so i learned about alex white from that book mm-hmm. revenant but then I listened to his first book that he's really well known for, oh. um, which is probably uh, it's one of a, a trilogy. Uh, it's called "A Big Ship at the Edge of the Universe." It did take me a couple of chapters to kind of get into it and get the, or actually I think it was like five or six chapters before I got into it in the audio book. But uh, it's a it's a longer book, but it was really good. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's a trilogy. I listened to the first one. I, I'm not immediately going to listen to the second one, uh, but it was enjoyable and uh, definitely a different, uh, different take. It was a fantasy sci-fi. Oh, interesting. So where humans in the future have magical talents, oh. um, and there are also be- and humans that don't have them, few and far between. And then there is this space and this big mystery of uh, of a ship and a lot of history it was actually really good really complex Hmm. interesting characters and um so yeah i enjoyed that and have been and finished that so and then i jumped on to reading the latest uh high republic book the fallen star which i just started so there is everything that is a lot well it's been a long time since we've talked about this you know so um i think you and i have talked offline about this more than we've talked about it on the podcast so anything I need, else i need that, to wash my clothes probably since no. your dog so much yes um anything else that you have been watching or viewing that you wanted to share and talk about um i feel that we spoke about most of it do we even talk about the witcher like i feel like oh my gosh so the long. witcher yeah we really have not talked about the witcher i enjoyed season two did you enjoy season two i enjoyed season two i thought that yennefer got the short end of the stick a little bit in season two like she was kind of just like i don't know i felt that she got sidelined a little bit with her with her uh loss of her magic and then I don't know. It was it was it was good. I mean, like I liked it. I because Yennefer was just such a force in season one. I kind of missed that. Um, 
And I think that obviously season two was a time of discovery for her, for her to understand like her relationship with her herself and with magic. But I kind of feel that it took a while to kind of get there. Like well, it took the whole al- season. Well, yeah, and we also have the whole. We I feel like we learned a lot about witchers. Mm-hmm. Yes, and, that, was, and, that was good. Uh, their kind of history. So I thought that was that was really good. Uh, we learned at first. I thought that. I can't remember her name, the the young girl, Siri. Siri. Mm-hmm. Um, I felt like at first, at the early part of the season, her looking older kind of bothered me. Oh. Um, clearly, uh, I mean, obviously she's going to look older, but uh-huh. since, since season one and season two started, right. like, concurrently, like, we, we get to the main timeline at the end of season one, right. and then we jump into season two. Season two is all about, like, is first and foremost is a straight through season like there's no time jumping there's no so like, yeah there's we no, don't like, have tiny to whiny nonsense yeah we don't so we don't need to figure out what's going on when it's all happening in a, in a straight timeline which is uh helpful uh so there's that um i really enjoyed it i'm looking for, i really i mean i'm sure we're another year away from season three at least, yeah uh yeah at least um but i'm really enjoying i really enjoy i mean looking at henry cavill but also huh. uh i i just enjoy his character and um i enjoy the, the the way that the the journey has kind of evolved for the witcher um and also all the you know all the all the impact of all this storyline on the witchers, the group that he belongs to, like, mm-hmm. and, and their castle, right? So, or their, I don't know, their... I don't remember what it's called. I know. Their, their stronghold. Their chateau, whatever. their stronghold in the mountains. Their chateau. Um, which has already been destroyed and, and beaten up, and there's more holes in it than there are in uh, city streets in New York City. So, um, so yeah, so... Uh, that did you have any other thoughts on The Witcher? I'm sure we can do a whole episode on The Witcher. I mean, like, I, I did enjoy this season, like I said. I wish Yennefer had more presence. She was just... I uh, felt like this, this season was more about... It's more about Ciri and Geralt. Yeah, Geralt, um, yeah. Than, I think, Yennefer. I just... Yeah. Yennefer was just so memorable in season yeah. one and you're kind of rooting for her the whole time yeah um where i i kind of felt that this season we didn't have as much of that in her character which i kind of missed and i feel that again this is a thing with the witcher and maybe this is a thing with some of the other shows we enjoy that the expanse they kind of just like throw these pronouns at you and i'm like i don't know what you guys are talking about like you know these names and places and people and oh yeah the, point, the way like, that i have no idea <laughs> yeah the way that um, the world is because we we get into the elves this there's season. a lot yeah there's a lot of like b c d e plots like you know the machinations of the elves and then that other witch that's with um with what's that kingdom ne- and then and something Sorry. oh i don't i don't even know the kingdom's names that's how like Nilheim, Neth- Oh yeah, Nilheim or something. Um, Some, yeah, and then something the like witch, the witch in the forest, and that. Oh yeah, that, that whole piece. mythology was a little bit. I was like, where is this coming from? Yep. And like, and then um, I yeah, there was there was a lot going on, and then the the plotting with like the other mages, and then some of the royalty. It was like. There was just a lot happening, and then I, I not, I'm not quite sure it all kind of came together at the end, other than, like, everyone's out to find Siri now. Everyone knows yes. that Siri has elder blood, yes. and she is going to tip the scales of, like, the world or whatever. So I think that was kind of the gist. But and then I, the and ending, like, right? Then then we have the ending. Then we, fi- then we find, like, the emperor of Nilheim is Siri's father, or whatever it was just like there was a lot going on um and some of the things i just did not really care about like some of the elf stuff i was like all right it's fine and then like if you remember like the elf queen like kind of formed a relationship a friendship with like the witch in Nilheim, right. and then yeah. i was like is there something going on here right 
I was just like, I don't know. There was this lava. Well, that was on. really, you know, yeah, I thought what, that the whole storyline was interesting because there was lack of trust and there they built trust and then they blew the trust. Right. And I'm still, are you clear on who killed their the elf child? Uh, yeah, the emperor did. Oh, the emperor himself yeah. did? or Yeah, the emperor did. Because he, the emperor wanted the elves to turn against the human. The Norn, oh, okay. Which they did. Huh. Because the witch and the other guy, <laughs> there's so many characters, the witch and the other guy, the general, were like, oh, we did it. Like, remember? Like, right, right, city, yeah. Like, oh, we, we did this because we, we were plotting and, you know, this is the plan all along. Yeah. And the emperor was like, whatever, bitches. <laughs> I did it. Right, yeah. You know? It was just like a lot. There was a lot of like scheming, a lot of machinations. I was like, "Is this The Witcher or is this Gossip Girl?" Like, there's just a lot <laughs> like backstabbing and planning and scheming, and I, to a point where I was like, "I don't know who these people are anymore. I don't care." So. Yeah, I thought that it wasn't clear as to who was uh, who the series' father was until you know the very end, and right. we did it see was, a th- it. Was just like I think there was like they they tried to shove a lot in. And then, yeah. like, then you have, like, the wild hunt, which honestly is not that well explained. Um, you know that it's, like, this, like, apocalyptic, like, horseman kind of deal. Oh, but you right, don't really yeah. Know, like, you don't know that. You don't really talk about it. They're yeah. hinted at a lot. We see them. Yep. But it's, like, there's not... There's some of the mythologies is not expanded on, and then we're just left guessing. Like, that's the other thing that I'm kind of just, like, we're kind of just... We kind of need to kind of make assumptions or, like, whatever. Right, yeah, no. Sometimes it does that. They just, like, throw all these things at you and, like, hope it lands. Well, and they're, they're you know, they're following the book, the book series to some extent. A little bit of book, a little bit of the video game. It's, like... Oh, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Right. yeah. So it's kind of an amalgamation of... Yeah. Of different sources and things so um oh, oh. my god <laughs> okay well for our loyal listeners there's been a slight catastrophe the plant was knocked over in my department because the dog got too rambunctious and mike got too excited throwing the ball so here we are oh it's well so whatever I can't deal with that shit. <laughs> In any case, here we... I, I'm not helping you with that. No, it's fine. It's fine. fine. Yes. It is fine. Yes. So, um, so okay. Anything else? Anything else off topic that you want to talk about? Um, no. I think that is mostly it. Okay. All right. What else are we looking forward to other than more Star Trek? Uh, I don't have anything to look forward to. Nothing. I mean, it's very bleak. Uh, it's bleak, very bleak. Bleak, bleak, bleak television-wise. All, <laughs> all I have is Star Trek to watch now, right? Uh, there's no more oh, Expanse. Yeah. Uh, oh, The Book of Boba Fett, we did, which we did not talk oh about. Oh, my God. I have so many notes. Yeah, let, so many let's, notes. Save, let's save Boba Fett for next week. I we'll talk so about so much feedback. Yeah, that's a oh whole another. So The Book of Boba Fett, I think, is the only other genre thing that's, that's right. live and happening right now. Other oh than God. that, it's just uh, that. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, I did. Oh, I did go and see Dennis and I went and saw the amazing Sp- uh, the know, Spider Man uh, No it. Way Home. Excellent. Yeah. I have to say, uh, it is one of my favorite Marvel movies. I know. Everyone's saying that. I haven't. I don't. I. I can't. Even, I'm no not even going to give you any spoilers. It's just I. I mean, and, and on top of that, other than uh, I do have a huge crush on Simo. Simo. Simo Lee. Who you plays yes. uh, Ch- uh, Shang Chi? Yeah, uh, I have a crush on him, but I also have a huge crush on Tom Holland now. Um, oh, really? Yeah, I don't know. He just is cute and sexy, and you know why not? Why not? <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, yeah, you get to see him as boxers. I mean, he's cute. He's he's good to look at, and yeah, you you feel for him throughout this entire movie. Aww. So. Uh, yeah, a lot of great feelings from this movie. By far one of my favorite Marvel movies in recent memory. Shang-Chi. By the way, the only movies I have gone to see since the pandemic mm-hmm. has been Shang-Chi and Spider-Man. 
Yeah, I saw Shang Chi in theaters, and then also Eternals, which was okay. So I uh, we did watch Eternals on um, on Disney, Disney Plus. Plus. Mm-hmm. That was good. I could have waited for Disney Plus. I, I don't. Oh I don't yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm glad I waited for Disney Plus. I did also watch uh, the final James Bond, James Bond 25, No Time to Die. In theaters? Which, uh, no, I watched it here. I bought it on. Oh, you on, bought it? I bought it and watched it. Um, Look at you. Yeah, you know, I'm a bit of a completionist, and I had a few of the movies in iTunes, and uh, yeah, I just decided to buy the ones. And I actually, so that's the other thing I watched. I did watch uh, watch the last couple of I I don't I didn't watch Casino Royale. I think I watched Quantum of Sol- Solace and Onward, and then finally just this week while Dennis has been away, I think Saturday night or yeah Saturday night or Sunday night, I watched No Time to Die, and it was excellent as well yeah yeah very good uh so yeah so yeah so yeah quite a bit of quite a bit of tv but now i feel like we're in the dry spell now i don't know now i feel like we're approaching that another dry spell covid dry spell of shows to watch because nothing is really grabbing my attention Mm. Uh, nothing's on the horizon that i can think of that i'm super excited about Uh, other than strange new worlds super excited about that uh, but that's not till May. May. I know, I know. That's, uh, <laughs> We're in mid-January right I now. I know. So, so I'm, I'm worried. What am I going to do? So you want to uh, start an aquarium? No, I do not want to start an aquarium. I oh, have... do you like Bridgerton? It's coming up in March. Oh, yeah. I, I mean, I watched the first season. It's not sci-fi, series. but... It's yeah. not. I did watch the first... We did watch the first season of Bridgerton, and I think the captivating, uh, the captivating point of season one is the regent or the cat what is this the duke the duke the, the main dude yeah renee i don't know his name. renee yeah she's just well you can watch snowpiercer did you watch uh the matrix movie no oh yeah i saw oh the matrix Re- Reso- revolutions resurrections resurrection peacemaker no no interest no interest didn't really uh didn't really love the character in the suicide squad so not gonna watch a series devoted to him okay all right um well, you, sh- you Dennis could. might watch it, but I won't. I don't. I think it's. Yeah. Um, I mean, you could. You can watch Snowpiercer. It's not bad. Okay. It's actually well, interesting. Maybe. All right. Um, has some interesting ideas. Okay. All right. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else no. really. I, I mean, think. I think we're we're we've pretty much exhausted. We'll we'll talk about the Book of Boba Fett next week after we watch, uh, episode four, which, uh, you've if heard. If he pees on me, I will. He will freak not pee. The fuck. <laughs> He's not gonna pee on you. But it is getting time to wrap this up. So uh, right. I think that's enough for off topic. And uh, I'm going to jump right into fan sets really quick. Oh, yeah. Let's talk about our sponsor. Yeah. So fan sets sponsors the Trek Geeks Podcast Network and Deep Space Pride. And uh, so right before uh, right before the telethon this weekend, uh, well, one, it was Lou's birthday. So happy birthday to Lou. Oh, the Gilded Age. Are you excited for that one? Gilded Age. It's from Julian Fowles. Oh, the oh Jackson, yeah. I, I just saw a our ad for that. I, mean, I my... love Carrie Coon. Do you know who Carrie Coon is? No, I do she not. She was on The Leftovers. No, no <gasps> idea. Oh, my God. Have you ever seen The Leftovers? I don't think so, no. Heartbreaking. No. Heartbreaking, fantastic what? What? series. Oh, heart- heartbreaking, fantastic. Don't no, but Two it's words so that are usually good. not in the same sentence. Well, no. I mean, like, The Expanse is heartbreaking sometimes. But, like, The Leftovers is excellent. Carrie Coon is amazing. And I'm so excited for The Gilded Age because Carrie Coon's in it. Uh, we, have Gilded, we have Carrie Coon. Who else do we have? We have, like, a lot of HBO people. Okay, in but this is more of a historical fiction a la... What, what did she write before this? Uh, what he, Julian Fellows? Yeah. He did okay. Downton Abbey. Downton Abbey, that's right. Well, this is supposed to be like New York in the late 19th century. Okay, into 1880s, right. yeah. 1890s. Right. Like the yeah. golden age of New York. Yes. So, I'm I mean, not, I mean, I mean, very check it out. far off from the genre of this 
you know yeah we like, do watch other things other than sci-fi fantasy yes uh, oh my god you should so. give the leftovers a, though they might end up depressed yeah no but no. it's See, so you, good you so good sold it wrong fail so good anyway let's go back to talking about yes this, is, this happens every time that we talk about fans that's we have one more thing to talk about before one we in the middle of the in our sponsor app I'm, here you know why because i'm going through like my hbo app to see okay what else well maybe put down your phone and pay attention be present okay in the but you're the one that talks about fan sets i don't talk about fan sets you talk about fan sets and then at the end i'm like that's fan sets and that's it so continue it's past someone's bedtime uh <laughs> he needs an, his evening nap he oh he didn't have his evening nap anyway no. um so fans that supports the Trekkies podcast network and deep space pride and we are so happy for their partnership with us and uh for the new releases for January 15th, uh, we have three new microfigure releases. We have uh, Wayun, uh, Lita, and Galt. So definitely go check out those. Also, if you want to check out the new uh, f- kind of full, I don't know what the, the full size. Uh, yeah, the ships. The ships. Uh, what is the Trek Pro Files line of collectibles? So it's going to be ships, deltas, and oversized characters. They are starting out with the Enterprise refit as their first one, and that's going to come out in uh, in April. I believe it's going to launch at Mission Chicago. So super excited about that. You can't order that yet, obviously, but uh, it is on their web. Uh, it is on their Instagram. I didn't necessarily find it on their website, but you should go over to Fansets on Instagram and follow them there, and you'll keep up to date on all the latest pin collectibles that they sponsor and if you uh, that they create uh, and if you spend more than thirty dollars of pins which is really easy to be honest uh, they have so many great pins over 400 star trek pins and tons of other uh, genres including scooby-doo harry potter and uh, doom patrol green lantern wow this list just goes on and on justice league uh, there's so many things that they do. Oh, and you can break it down by series in Star Trek. So uh, check that out. Their Women in of Trek series is also pretty amazing. But if you go and spend $30, uh, you're going to get free shipping. And if you use the code DSPRIDE, all one word, all caps, you're going to save an amazing 10% off your order. And we want to thank Fansets for being our exclusive sponsor of Deep Space Pride and the Trek Geeks Podcast Network. Emily in Paris. That's the other one you have to watch. No. Yeah, here's good. But thanks, fan sets. <laughs> <laughs> and before I kill Johnson, Johnson, please tell us, bring this home. Tell us, bring tell, this home. bring this home, and tell our listeners how they can get in touch with us. Yeah, so y'all can reach us on the socials on Twitter and Instagram. <laughs> like, which platforms are we on? Twitter and Instagram at D Space Pride, and you can email us at dspacepride at gmail.com please send us your recommendations as to what what shows and movies we can watch while we are also watching star trek because apparently we're entering a dry spell and mike needs more content to watch so i need something different and emily parrot in paris does not fulfill that at all let's just be clear have you tried it no i have no interest in it whatsoever really there are hot guys in it all right, maybe. Ah! But no, not really. I'm not, you know, because, you know, yes. Yeah, it's, it's just fluffy. That's okay. Well, fluffy, you know. It's escapist. Uh, is it? Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, right. it is. All right, maybe. But I'm not. I've seen like half an episode. I was like, oh, is- well, this is this this resounding. Well, it was too fluffy for me. Review is, oh, too fluffy for you. Yeah. No, oh, so you stopped halfway through the episode. Well, you know, the problem is she worked in advertising and that was triggering. <laughs> she, they, the first, uh, the first. Escapism until. The first conversation is about like, I think social media. I'm like, oh, triggered. Oh, uh, see. <laughs> And since I talk to you all day on Slack, I think it'll probably be triggering for me because I'm just going to be like, God, this is like Johnson's life if we were a 20-something girl she, in her, social media. Yeah, it's a little different. She's, she's, she works for an ad company and then she ends up in Paris somehow. Okay. So, I don't know. Yeah, none, of that, none of that interests me at all, despite the hot guys being in it. Anyway, are you going to bring this home or am I? 
Am I going to land this plane or you? What are you talking about? I already shared our social media channels. Okay, well, thanks everyone for listening to this live in person <laughs> broadcast of Deep Sea Pride. I was like, what else do you want from me? I want you to land the plane, <laughs> as we say. <laughs> what uh, else? I don't know. <laughs> Anyway, we look forward to you talking to you next week about time amok and uh, other, and we'll talk about the book of Boba Fett as well on next week's episode of Deep Space Pride. Thanks everyone for listening, and we'll catch you next week. Bye everyone. Deep Space Pride is a production of Coconut Media Works. Executive producers Bill Smith and Dan Davidson. For more great Star Trek discussion, discover the other shows of the Trek Geeks podcast network at trekgeeks.com or find us in Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or your favorite podcast app. Thank you.